A while back, I wrote one of the most popular posts on Tim Ferriss' blog about how to build a million dollar business in a weekend. That is exactly what I'm going to show you today. This is part one where we're gonna focusing on how to figure out what idea to do and how big is that actual opportunity. Part two will be how do you actually take your idea and turn it into real customers and then a million dollar business. Step one. Yeah, we're diving right in. Find your profitable idea. I'm gonna show you six ways that you can find a business idea. And I know if you're like, oh, I don't have any, I got you. Number one, review your top sellers on Amazon.com, especially in the book category. So try to see what's already popular out there. I don't know why you're thinking about reinventing the wheel. A lot of times I just like piggybacking on what's already working. So pool floats, I don't know, echo stuff, a lot of home stuff, a lot of computer stuff. Uh, I'm in the gravel biking lately. That's something I'm gonna talk about as well. Maybe it's getting a dog. I know some people that wanna get a corgi or a chihuahua, which we'll talk about. So look here what's popular. Number two is on reddit.com. I go to the subcategory DIY. A lot of times you can see what people are building for themselves and then you see these amount of comments, hundreds of comments, it's like, I want that. That's what a business is. You make something that people want and you give it to them and they give you money. For me, one of the things I've been interested in lately is gravel cycling. Yeah, it's actually a thing. Go on Reddit, see what people are talking about, see what people are asking for, and maybe there's something there that you can build around a business like that. I'm trying to show you ideas to kind of get that brain stimulated. Number three, Facebook groups. Again, a lot of times what you're looking for when you're browsing these different things for business ideas is for people raising their hand and saying, I have money and I want to give it to you for this thing. So pay attention when people are saying, that looks great, I want that. Two other things that I highly recommend for you. Number one, think about what you're already doing naturally. Are you painting? Are you cooking? So for myself, I love marketing, I love business, I love software, and I love a good deal. And that's exactly what AppSumo.com is. It was like, how do I do the three things that I love every single day? So think about maybe for yourself or something that one of my favorite techniques is text a best friend saying, hey, if I started a business today, what business do you think I would start? I actually think you'll be surprised what you find out. I challenge you to do that right now. One last idea of if you're trying to think about how to start a business is what sucks. Go through your day and say, what in my day was actually really inefficient? Was it in the shower? Was it commuting? Whatever that is, maybe it's your desk. I love solving my own problems first. In my last business, we were doing Facebook games and I hated all the payment providers. So Andrew on our team in a weekend, built our own payment provider, and guess what? It became a seven-figure business. By the way, if you're the one in a billion person who didn't get any ideas from some of the steps I've already showed you, here's exactly what you do. Find one of your friends who has money, uh, and then you wanna ask them, hey, what has been on your to-do list for over two weeks that you could pay me for and I will do it for you. It all starts with one customer right now. By the way, bonus tip around business ideas. If you still have no ideas, come on, dog, I'm trying to help you out. All you have to do around your business today is go help someone for free. So some of the people that I've hired on the Dork team that helped do these YouTube videos for us, they've come and offered things for free. They've done volunteering on a bike ride for free. They've made videos for free. They did our social media for free. And those are the three people we've hired for doing this. So think about who you can approach, do work for free, and guess what? Maybe you'll end up making five or six figures from helping people out. So before we get into step two of the five system process, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Ding! Because I'll be posting weekly subscriber only content, such as links to my private eight figure office hours, behind the scenes of things that are going on in the business, as well as do freebies and goodies for subscribers only. So if you don't wanna miss out, you need to make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on that little bell so YouTube will make sure you get notified every single time. Boom town, let's get it on. So step two, I want you to find out how big your market is. And why is that so critical is that you and me both have 24 hours in a day. And so if you're gonna work on something, might as well make sure that you're putting effort towards something that has a big opportunity versus a big little peanut. Key point here I really want you to think about, don't spend so much time on the playing and researching, which is really easy to get distracted. Don't sweat the domain. The most important thing in any single business is, drum roll, brrr, your customers. So don't get discouraged thinking about all the playing part. And I'm gonna talk to you a little bit later in the video about how to do your validation. So guess what? If it's not working, you can find something that is. All right, so we're gonna take a few examples of creating an info product, which is selling like a PDF or maybe a course. And so we're gonna take two things that I'm interested in. We're gonna use a few tools and all the descriptions for the tools will be below so that you can see them. So there's three approaches to doing market research. Don't get discouraged and play around in this whole step one through four too much. Any idea can pretty much work as long as it's got some amount of customers desiring it. So number one, a spreadsheet. This is exactly how I started AppSumo. What I did is I said, how big is the market for people buying discounted software? So I went and copied Mac Ice's numbers that which were actually public and crazy. So you can see this on this spreadsheet here as well. The spreadsheet lives on Tim Ferriss's blog. You can get the link below in the description. So you can see that there was about 40,000 of their bundles sold, what price, how many fees, what was the split, what was the profit margin and so forth. It's not really complicated. Is it at least a large ass market? And then I'm gonna go attack it. So you can see that this was actually half a million dollars from one deal that they did. It gave me opportunity and hope that, oh wow, if I do software deals, there's gonna be a big market. 
So let me take another example, but I think spreadsheets are literally the first thing you have to do in any single business before you get started to make sure, how many do I need to sell? What does my profit margin look like? All right, I can do this, or maybe there's something I need to change about it. So the second thing I would recommend is let me show you a few tools that you can actually use for yourself to see directionally, is this market growing? Is it flat? How many people are in it? And really it's just giving you an idea, is this something that's gonna be on the upswing? Which guess what? You wanna be surfing in tidal waves. So the thing that you wanna look at, number one is trends.google.com. And how does it compare to other things in your categories? So I put up Chihuahuas, if we were starting to sell a Chihuahua info book or a Chihuahua course, or maybe it's Chihuahua food, uh, or a Chihuahua daycare, I don't know, dog owners. And, and so I'm just trying to make sure like, how does it compare to other dogs? Another category I wanted to show you as well is I'm really into cycling. So I checked out mountain biking uh, and guess what? It's blowing up, which is specifically gravel bikes, which I'm interested in lately. You can see that there's a huge spike that's come uh, during the COVID period. And so it's like, all right, there's something there with that for maybe it's selling products there, maybe it's services, maybe it's a website, whatever it is. This is actually just saying, all right, there's something there that I can go with. Uh, the next slide up in this second section, which is a more database section, is the Keyword Planner by Google Ads. And so what you're doing here is you're gonna search gravel, if it's into biking, and the thing you're looking for is that are people searching for it? Good. And is that competition or not? What does competition mean? People are spending money on ads, which is generally actually a pretty good thing. You might think it's bad, it just means no, there's money in the category. If you search Chihuahua, which is another thing we've been talking about, um, let me just show you right here, there is people looking for it, and uh, a huge amount, the competition's low, doesn't mean it's bad for you. It means that maybe it's gonna be a lot easier for you to win. Uh, and so you can see right here, it's half a million people a month. That's good, let's go get it. Two other sites that I would check out for you if you're starting any single business. Number one is spyfu.com. It's similar to the keyword planner tool. And it, again, a lot of these things are like, what are keywords people are looking for if I'm starting to start a newsletter? Or what are the key questions that people are asking? You can see the questions and the words people are using to maybe give you ideas of what kind of dog food or business to start with that. Uh, so this is spyfu.com. You can use any kind of free keyword tool uh, publicly similar to this. And the last thing that I'd highly recommend is using Facebook ads. So Facebook is pretty much the entire world. And what's phenomenal about this is that they actually let you go into an audience section and Facebook changes this page a lot. So don't worry what it looks like exactly at this period in time, but worry if you can get to the audience section and type in the keyword of whatever business category you're starting. This is kind of how you can advertise to these people. Or with Google, it's people searching for content and articles as well. So with the Chihuahua thing, I just type in Chihuahua and you can see right here, 6.6 .6 million, million people are looking for this. And that's really promising for you because I don't think we're gonna reach all 6 million, probably not through ads, probably not through Facebook, but even if it's a small percentage of it, it's just giving us indicators that this is something significant for us to be spending time on. Step three, assess your customer's value. So what's really important about this is that if you're working on something of a category of people where those customers don't have any money or it's not really valuable to them, they're not gonna buy whatever the hell you're selling. So we can go figure out a different product, a different vertical that will be easier for you. So right now with a Chihuahua owner, let's say you wanna create an info product about how to train your Chihuahua or whatever it is for you. So we wanna figure out what is the actual cost of having a Chihuahua and see if you're selling something, all right, how much of a percentage is it for that person? So to buy a Chihuahua, it costs about $650. Is that what you thought it would be? And this is just the base cost. And so what it does cost then to keep the Chihuahua alive and feed the Chihuahua every single year is about $500 to $3,000. And then Chihuahuas live about 15 years, which is pretty impressive. So the total cost of a Chihuahua to have one is about 15,000 bucks over 15 years, which is a lot of money for most people. I guess Chihuahua owners love their dogs. The conclusion, which is actually really interesting, knowing that they're spending $15,000 at least to have a Chihuahua, is that if you were selling something that's $50, maybe it's food, maybe it is the info product, whatever it is, you can know that, all right, well, they're spending that much, $50 won't be that bad for them to wanna to spend on whatever it is I'm here to help them with. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, just like that. I like you too, dog. So click here for part two about how to take your idea now and turn that into a million dollar business in a weekend.